today we will uh, take up demodulation of FM signals, angle modulation signals. Okay. Uh, we looked at the methods of generating FM signals, FM and phase modulated signals. Now, we'll let us look at how we can demodulate. Now, what do we need for demodulating FM signals? We need a system or a device whose output is sensitive to the angle of the incoming signal, to the phase of the incoming signal, right? That is what we are looking forward to. So, FM demodulation I, I, I may talk about FM demodulation of FM signals, but really speaking, whatever uh, we discuss for FM is with some modifications can be used for phase, mod, phase demodulation. So, basically, we require circuits. which are sensitive to and uh, therefore, uh, which pr produce yield an output proportional to the frequency deviation of the input. Right? After all, where is the information residing in an FM signal? The information is residing in this <coughs> particular feature frequency deviation. Right. So, as the input frequency varies, as the instantaneous input frequency varies, you would like the output of this device, this circuit, the output amplitude to vary accordingly. Right. That is what you are looking for. Devices or circuits which can do this job are called discriminators. Right. So, these kinds of devices are called discriminators, more precisely they are called frequency discriminators, right? because they are able to discriminate frequen the frequency of the incoming, incoming signal. Right? So, if you were to see this mathematically, suppose you have received modulated signal, let us call it x sub r t, the sub r denoting for uh, denoting the fact that it is a received signal is an angle modulated signal of this kind then you need an output from the discriminator the discriminator output let me call this y sub dt right the discriminator will produce an output y sub dt which should be proportional to let me say there is a discriminator constant k sub t into d theta by d t right? because frequency deviation is proportional to uh, theta. Uh, uh, pardon me, I will I'll just call this phi because theta I am going to use for something else later. So, let the instantaneous phase deviation be phi of t therefore, the out discriminator output ideal discriminator output should be having an input output characteristic, characteristic like this. Right. And as you can see for an FM signal your phi of t is k sub f times integral of m t d t or m um, t prime d t prime from minus infinity to t and therefore, the discriminator output which is proportional to the derivative of this will be equal to k sub d times k sub f times m t which is what you want. You want an output proportional to the message signal. You want to get your message back after demodulation. So, k d is uh, if you remember k sub f was the f m generator constant right. So, that was a generator constant proportionality constant and k sub d is the discriminator constant. So, if you were to express this fact graphically at the on the x axis suppose I show the input 
signal frequency deviation input frequency deviation right what kind of characteristics you want or let me say um, so let me not call it deviation let me call it input frequency so when the input frequency is equal to the carrier frequency itself f sub c, sub c that means at that instant the message value is 0 right so at the carrier frequency f sub c output should be 0 this is output voltage right i'm plotting output voltage versus input frequency characteristics that you would like to have in a frequency discriminator right when the input signal frequency is f sub c output voltage should be 0 and if it deviates from it deviates from fc the voltage should be output voltage should be proportional to the deviation so it should be a linear function around fc right if it becomes less than fc it should produce a negative output if it becomes more than fc it should produce a positive output in proportion to the magnitude of the signal so you are looking for a characteristics like this right is that okay and the constant k sub d is nothing but the slope of this straight line right so think of this as k sub d when this is 1 when the input frequency deviation changes by 1 unit the output voltage changes by k sub d units right so these are the ideal characteristics of a frequency discriminator this is for the demodulation of fm signal of course right now we are looking at the principle as to what do we need to do in order to demodulate the question of how to do it still remains right that is something that we still need to address but before we do that before we take up the question of how to realize such characteristics let us also consider the situation when the input signal is an is a phase modulated signal now if i have a frequency discriminator can I use it, use it to demodulate phase modulation? Hmm? Pass what to the integrator? That is right. If you remember, how do you realize a phase modulator using a frequency generator, frequency modulator? You first differentiate the input signal and then pass that through the FM generator. So, therefore, the FM generator output that you will get will be proportional to dm by dt. And therefore, if you want empty back, you must integrate the output, right? So, if you have a frequency discriminator, but you are working with a phase modulated signal, so demodulation of F PM is as follows. You have a phase modulated signal here at the input, and you have a frequency discriminator. the output y of t here is not proportional to m t but proportional to d m by d t. So, you must pass it through an integrator to get something which is proportional to. So, this is your the detected output now and you can say that y of t as far as y of t is concerned this will produce an output k sub d times k sub p into d m by d t right where k sub p was a phase modulator constant right and y sub the detected output the demodulated output final demodulated output is going to be equal to k sub d times k sub p into m when you integrate so if you have a frequency frequency discriminator you can use it to demodulate both FM signals as well as phase modulated signals. Now, the question of how to realize it. You are looking for 
um, some circuit or some system which can do this job produce an output voltage proportional to the input frequency actually input frequency deviation right as this is this it is proportional to the input frequency deviation from the carrier frequency from the FC. Okay. There are many ways of doing this and we will consider some of them here right and all of them unfortunately will not realize the ideal characteristics that you want, but they will try to approximate them as closely as possible right. The ideal characteristics that we want is clear to us right, but to physically realize them you will not be able to get them because you will have to use some physical device and there is no physical device which will directly, directly do this. You will have to design something and see whether it comes close to uh, the required operations or not. Okay, so, let us look at some approximate realizations of the discriminator. of the ideal characteristics that we just discussed. Now, one very simple approximation can be obtained as follows. Take your received signal x sub r t, pass it through a differentiator. <coughs> Could you have thought of this yourself? Does that uh, uh, does it come from this <coughs> characteristic for example, you know you have you have a system here whose output linearly depends on the input frequency right. Suppose you uh, think of the ideal differentiator d by d t, what is its uh, uh, frequency response like? You have a system which is just carries out differentiation is equal to g omega right linearly depends on the frequency right. So, it makes sense that somehow this characteristics could be realized by using a differentia differentiator the only thing is the differentiator has this characteristics not around f c, but around the 0 frequency right which is not what we are looking for we are looking for these characteristics around f c. So, we could call such a device as some kind of a band pass differentiator differentiator which gives you this linear characteristics around some carrier frequency around some center frequency f sub c right that is what you are looking for. So, you start with a normal differentiator just d by d t operation right. So, nothing it is not a band pass differentiator by itself right now, but this output of this differentiator if I call this e of t now I pass this through an envelope detector. Now, that strange combination, but it does the job that we are looking for and that can be taken as your detected output or demodulated output ok. <coughs> Excuse me, let us see how this works or how this can possibly work. Let us start with our received signal which is a sub c cosine omega c t plus phi of t and differentiate this to generate E of t. What will you get when you differentiate this? You will get minus A sub c into the argument der derivative of the argument which is omega c plus d phi by d t times <coughs> sin of omega c t plus phi t. Right. Now, can you see some interesting features of this waveform E of t? What can you say about the waveform E of t? Any comments you would like to make? Any remarks? That is right. You can think of this as some modulating signal, right, which has a constant value times uh, plus a time varying value. Think of think of this as uh, an AM signal. Uh, sorry, a modulating signal. A modulating signal is d phi by dt here, right? And this produces amplitude modulation of 
this carrier right we, we, we can ignore this negative sign because uh, when you you can always absorb this negative sign by putting a plus pi plus pi by 2 or minus pi by 2 or whatever here right so you can ignore this because essentially it becomes a um, amplitude modulated signal the only difference between a normal amplitude modulated signal and this one is is there a difference what is the difference the carrier also has a phase variation right the same phase variations which were there already nothing new they are still there but if I look at the envelope they would not bother us right the phase variations do not bother us because the envelope if you remember what is the envelope envelope is the trace of the peaks of the carrier right phase variations do not bother us there at all. So, if I produce an output which is proportional to this instantaneous envelope what will I get I will get omega c plus d phi by d t or d phi by d t because envelope detector really produces an output proportional to the message signal m t right. So, the uh, the envelope detector will produce a y sub d t which is approximately which is equal to not approximately equal to which is equal to a sub c d phi by d t. Right. So, in this case your detector constant the k sub d becomes equal to a sub c right in <coughs> equal to the input carrier amplitude itself. So, here k sub d is equal to k sub c <coughs> excuse me. is it clear. So, in principle by having a differentiator followed by an envelope detector I can realize approximately what I want to realize right this is what I wanted and this is what I got. Uh, is there any difficulty with this. The See for okay, I think the point that I uh, that perhaps you're making, I do not know whether this is the point. You have to make sure that this is always positive. That means d phi by d t is always magnitude of d phi by d t is less than omega c, which is not a big deal, right? Because omega c is typically very large, right? So d phi by d t. So the normal required condition for end of detection would be satisfied. Right. So, there is a condition required here and the condition required is was this the point you are trying to make was yeah. So, magnitude of d phi by d t should be um, less than omega c that is what you are looking for right. and this is always typical the case typically always true. right but there is still one more difficulty yes one is the difficulty of realizing an ideal differentiator right <coughs> that's one issue that we need to discuss because uh, uh, it's not very clear how to realize that right uh, the second is and this is what i really want to discuss very, very briefly at this moment is the fact that we are ignoring in this discussion the fact that the input signal may have some amplitude variations as well right. Although at the transmitter when you send this uh, signal when you generate the signal there are no amplitude variations right, but the channel has noise which we are not yet discussing, but still we must be sensitive to the fact that the channel will add noise and as a result of that the received signal will not have only amplitude uh, uh, phase variations or frequency variation which is which should be the case for an ideal FM or PM signal, but will also have amplitude variation and if it does the differentiator will be sensitive to both the things right. It is not going to be sensitive only to the phase variations it is going to be proportion it is also going to produce which is going to depend on 
the fact that your input amplitude is no longer a constant, but a time varying thing right. So, you you are going to have the product of two time varying functions in that case and your differentiator output then is not going to be proportional to this, because the amplitude variations will also affect what you finally get at the demodulator output at the envelope of the signal E of t right. So, that is something that we need to return to. So, this is a remark that I like to uh, make at this stage that uh, a discriminator as realized uh, this is not uh, an ideal discriminator. An ideal discriminator should only look at the phase even if there are some amplitude variations it should ignore them right. So, uh, in as much as the above system does not Or, uh, or is sensitive to since it is sensitive to to amplitude variations as well. Right? It is therefore not an ideal discriminator in that sense. Right? So to to make it to make it behave like an ideal discriminator what you need to do is you have to make sure that the input f m signal that you present to it must have a constant amplitude right. So, uh, we need to ensure that the input angle modulated signal is of constant amplitude is it alright because if it is not of constant amplitude we will have an output y sub dt which will have dependence on not only your d phi by dt but also on the time variations a sub t, a of t. Suppose your input signal amplitude varies then those variations will also produce an output uh, there will be a proportionality because of that I mean there will be an out component because of that. Now, this kind of thing can be done by I mean this requirement can be met by a device called a limiter. So, this is taken care of by a device called limiter more precisely it is called a band pass limiter. Right. Let me tell you what a band pass limiter looks like. So, we are talking of a complete system diagram like this. You have your a received signal coming in the first block is what I call the amplitude limiter ok. Now, amplitude limiter has an input output characteristics which are like this if this is the instantaneous input voltage V sub i the instantaneous output voltage V sub o is like this. So, if the in what does it mean if the ins at any moment if the input amplitude is positive the output is a fixed amplitude signal output is a fixed voltage which is 1 let us say plus 1 right. If it is negative it produces an output which is minus 1 ok. So, can you see what is happening you have an f m signal coming in which has some amplitude variations what will be the output of such a device when the f m signal passes through this the sine wave the moment it becomes positive it crosses a 0 axis towards the positive side what will this device produce it will produce a constant amplitude from there onwards as long as it remains positive. So, the entire positive half cycle would become a constant value equal to plus 1 similarly the entire negative half cycle will become a constant value equal to minus 1. 
So, what kind of operation you are performing? This is called a hard limiting operation, right? Because you are basically converting a smooth sinusoidal signal into a square wave kind of frequency modulated signal. Okay. So, if the input waveform is let us say like that right this limiter at the output will produce a signal like that is that clear during this period it will produce a plus 1 output during this period it will produce a minus 1 output and so on. So, that is hard limiting actually this is therefore, this limiter is what is also called a hard limiter because it, uh, it, it converts smooth variations into just hard plus minus 1 variations right. The as you can see the frequency variation will be captured still by the 0 crossings of this square wave that you are getting at the output right. It is not exactly a pure square wave it is a modulated square wave of some kind, but that is what you have. But this is not what you want. You want a pure FM signal the way you had write written it mathematically a few minutes ago. To do that, what you have to do is pass it through a filter, a bandpass filter whose center frequency is F sub C, right? And this combination, this combination. is called a band pass limiter okay and this will it can be shown mathematically this will produce an output here finally at the output of this band pass filter the pure fm signal or the pure angle modulated signal without the amplitude variations even if this this signal has in amplitude variations this signal will have those amplitude variations are killed by this limiter you can see that is not it. Whatever amplitude variations are there in the signal suppose this cycle is of a larger amplitude and this cycle is of a smaller amplitude right all those amplitude modulations will disappear once you have this hard limiting operation right that was the reason why we put this limiter there. However, to convert it back into the sine wave that we started with modulated sine wave that we started with we must pass it through a bandpass filter of center frequency f sub c with sufficient bandwidth so that all the fm components pass through right that is the basic purpose of this bandpass and together we call it a bandpass limiter. I will take up the mathematical analysis of this device a little later, but I think the purpose of keeping it here is clear now and approximately how it works is also clear. May, be, may not be precisely, but approximately we know what is happening right. We are killing the amplitude variations first to the limiter and then um, converting it back into the uh, FM signal with sinusoidal carrier by using a bandpass filter that is the basic purpose. Is it clear? Clearly this is a nonlinear device the limiter is a nonlinear I mean it has a highly nonlinear input output characteristics right. So, this entire thing is a nonlinear system. Now, we are ready to use our combination that we just discussed that the ideal differentiator d y d t followed by envelope detector. So, this this system comes pretty close to being an ideal discriminator right? ideal frequency discriminator. Any questions? So, can I assume that it is ok? Okay. Let me spend a minute on uh, yes, please. <coughs> 
Right. Now I am passing the band pass limiter. Right. So my say, function is going to change like a so function, isn't it? Basically what we are saying is if your XRT, let us see what is the function of this dotted box. The function of this dotted box, this combination of limiter followed by a band pass limit, uh, band pass filter which we are calling this band pass limiter is that if your input signal is not of constant amplitude but has some amplitude variations A of t, right? which we know is an undesirable thing when in as far as operation of this combination is concerned because if you feed this to this directly the output here will not be proportional only to d phi by dt it will also have some dependence on this time function a of t right which is what which we what we don't want right so what we need to do is to convert this let me call this x r prime t and we want to convert this to our good old x sub r t which is equal to a constant amplitude a sub c cosine of omega c t plus phi t that is our objective. We want to go from this signal to this signal the pure FM signal or the pure angle modulated signal that we assumed earlier is the input to this device right. So this is what we actually getting from the channel and this is what we hope to do by passing it through a band pass limiter is that clear as to precisely mathematically how do we get that is something I will discuss little later but intuitively I think it is clear first objective is to kill the amplitude variations that may be there suppose the input signal has amplitude variations of this kind its amplitude is large here small here uh, and large here again right it would not matter anymore because the moment it becomes positive as long as it remains positive the output is of constant fixed value plus 1. It is not this it is not this envelope which I am going to detect this this envelope is being converted to a constant amplitude signal. This is what I am getting at the input <coughs> but his, his, I think he is uh, confused about what is happening in the limiter please try to understand what the limiter is doing limiter is just ampli limiting the amplitude of the input signal no matter what the input amplitude is it produces an output which is of constant value over the positive half cycle over this positive half cycle look at the input output relationship as long as the input is positive the output has a constant value of equal to plus 1 during this entire period the input is positive right so during this entire period the output has a value plus 1 during this entire period irrespective of the actual amplitude variation I will get an output which is minus 1 irrespective of the fact whether this is a large amplitude or a small amplitude I will always get only a <coughs> plus 1 or a minus 1 right similarly a plus 1 and a minus 1 and so on and so forth when this signal is passed through the band pass filter what I am saying is you will get back your old modulated signal back without the amplitude variations the mathematics mathematics of it will be discussed separately so if you have confusion about the mathematics we please wait for some time till we come to that but if you have confusion about the physics or the physical picture we can discuss it now so when we pass through the limiter then we lost the information to uh, what was ac exactly that's we right one ac we won't get ac exactly we get one here it's maybe ac prime okay. some other amplitude some right it's some constant amplitude we are doing this to remove amplitude variation which may be also due to noise, it may also be due to something else. Okay, uh, actually you are coming to now how the FM signal will behave in the presence of noise. We are not doing that kind of detailed discussion right now. We will do that separately, right? Right now our limited goal is how to convert a non-constant amplitude angle moderated signal into a constant amplitude angle modulated signal so that we can feed it through a combi to a combination of d by dt and analog detector to produce the demodulated signal 
that was the limited objective of this discussion. We will discuss the detailed effect of noise separately, you will have to wait for that. Okay? Yes, please. Yes. No, how can the output of a band pass will be a square wave? Please think about that, it cannot be. Right? That is precisely what we will discuss mathematically also, but intuitively a band pass filter is a resonant circuit tuned to a specific frequency with a certain bandwidth. It cannot produce a square wave at its output which has which is very rich in harmonics, which will have a large number of frequency components not only not only around F C but also around 2 F C, 3 F C and so on and so forth. It will only pass the components around F C and therefore will produce an output which was similar to what we originally wanted, right. The band pass filter cannot produce a square wave, no filter can produce a square wave at its output, right. A filter will smoothen out the square wave. Right, it will remove the components, uh, the higher harmonics compo components, or whatever are not being passed by the filter. Okay, does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. Now, this differentiator that we're talking about, somebody mentioned that it's difficult to realize that the ideal differentiator, right? And that's really a key point: how to realize that differentiator, right? In particularly. Uh, you know we are looking for a differentiator which works <coughs> nicely for the com input signal that we are feeding. We are not we are not feeding a baseband signal here. The input to the system is not a baseband signal, it is a modulated signal around some carrier, right. So, I cannot use a simple operational amplifier and uh, use it as a differentiator. Well, theoretically one can if your operational amplifier can work up to that frequency, right. But suppose your uh, carrier frequency is 100 megahertz or um, around that neighborhood, you will find it very hard to find operational amplifiers which will help you realize a differentiator around that carrier frequency, right. So, realization of a differentiator at those at the frequencies of interest is uh, a non trivial exercise, non trivial job. There are two ways of realizing a differentiator in this context, there are many ways of realizing a differentiator otherwise. But realization in the context we have just mentioned can be done in two ways. I will be coming back to the bandpass limiter later. Let me just finish the discussion regarding the demodulator structure. One way is what is called using a simple time delay. A small time delay. Basically, literally taking the de derivative operation as what we, you know, how we define differenti differentiation in mathematics. You take x t minus x t minus tau divided by tau as tau tends to zero, right? That's the definition of a uh, derivative. So, literally try to realize that. Okay. So your input signal is coming in. You also have a small delay line of some kind which introduces a time delay which is very small, small time delay and take the difference between these two outputs in the direct output x sub r t and this delayed output. And that of course, you do not have to physically divide anything because after all you are dividing by constant. Now, here is some constant value. So, you can as well ignore uh, take it as a constant of proportionality, right. That is you can take as your E t passes through an envelope detector and that is it, that becomes a discriminator, right. So, basically what we are doing is yes, if this is plus 1, uh, this is plus, this is minus. Your E of t here is going to be x sub r t minus x sub r t minus tau. And if you were to divide by tau, this is what you would have got. This would have been the approximate value of the derivative, right. So, but since you are realizing only this much, your actual E t that you will get is tau times approximately tau times d x r right. 
Is that okay? As small as practically feasible to get, but it obviously has to be non-zero value. That's, that's a design. We'll look at that design issue separately. But you'll obviously have to choose not too small, and not too large a value, right? Because uh, too small a value you may not be able to control exactly. Too large a value will will not produce a good approximation to the derivative, right? Also, since it is proportional to I mean, if you look at the output, output is tau times this. If, if you make tau too small, right? Uh, what will happen if tau is zero? Zero. You will really subtract out the signal. Nothing will be there at the output. So the amplitude will depend on the value of tau. So you must choose a very large value of, reasonably large value of tau, so that you have a reasonably good amplitude, right? At the same time, if you make too large a value of, choose too large a value of tau, this is not a good approximation to what you want. So, one has to make a physical compromise on that basis. What is the demodulator constant in this case? So, k sub d here would be basically tau, right? Actually, a c into tau because uh, the, the, this differentiator itself will produce the, this x r t itself is a component of a c in this. So, a c into tau. This is one method of realizing the differentiator, right? Using a small delay line. A delay line at the carrier frequency is not too difficult to realize. You can just wind a small inductor, right? And the inductor the, the will produce a del delay, right? So a delay line is easy to uh, realize at that at these frequencies. The second method is using a bandpass filter itself. Now this is interesting. You can use a bandpass filter input output characteristics, the frequency response characteristics of a bandpass filter to realize a differentiator. Now that may look a little strange, but let us let us see what I mean by this. What is the typical bandpass filter transfer function? This, this is what it is. I am plotting the magnitude here, right. It is it peaks at around it, it peaks at its resonant frequency, plotting h of f against f, mod of h of f against <coughs> f, and it has a certain bandwidth around this carrier frequency, right. Can this be used as a differentiator? What do I want? For differentiation, I want a linear characteristic. Linear mod of h of f should be a linear function of the frequency. Is there a portion in this um, transfer function which is approximately linear? Hmm? This portion, right? If I use this characteristic, this portion of the um, bandpass filter characteristics and not the entire bandpass filter characteristics, right? Then I have got a approximate differentiator. So I I will use a center frequency f sub c prime, which is different from my actual carrier frequency. My actual carrier frequency will be somewhere here. Right? The incoming signal has a carrier frequency which is somewhere in the middle of straight line. Okay. So I approximately realize linear dependence of the response on the input frequency deviation, right. But obviously the bandpass filter center frequency f c prime would not be equal to f sub c, right. It will be typically greater than f sub c, right. You will choose f c prime which is greater than the actual carrier frequency f sub c. So, this is one way of doing it. However, <coughs> as you can see, there are ob some obvious problems with this approach. What are the obvious problems? One is the li linear range is going to be small, right? So, uh, linear region or linear range. If you try to, if you want to demodulate wideband FM, 
which has a large frequency deviation right then this may not be a very good idea <coughs> excuse me that is one problem and the second thing is it is not doing what we want to in terms of the response at fc right what was the response what is the desired response to fc the desired response should be zero this is not producing a zero response at fc right so leads to a dc bias in discriminator output which by itself is not a big deal because the dc can always be removed but you see it is it is preferable to have a system which i don't have to remove any dc it should not produce a dc of its own in fact that's one of the advantages of an fm signal that it it is it has a good response to dc component of the input signal right if the input signal has a dc component it will come through right because that dc component carry out a suitable frequency division which will come through but if the demodulator itself produces a dc bias then i won't be able to differentiate between this dc that is introduced by the differentiator by the demodulator and the one which was coming through in the original signal right i will remove both of them right which is not very nice so that the response nature character of the fm signal which is an advantage of the fm signal would get lost unless i do something about this so that doesn't mean that we have to give up this approach it only means we have to slightly modify this approach okay and i'll very briefly discuss the basic idea behind the modifier i'm only at the moment discussing things conceptually we'll convert this concept into mathematics later right <coughs> excuse me so what can we do about this now what we can do is something very simple that instead of having one bandpass filter have two bandpass filters both of which have their center frequency staggered away from the desired carrier frequency right differently so we have uh, uh, two bandpass filters so we we can realize the differentiator or the discriminator using two bandpass filters or uh, what i what i said to stagger tuned bandpass filters so let me let us say this is one bandpass filter whose amplitude characteristics are h1f <coughs> excuse me and this is the second bandpass filter right they are just tuned to different center frequencies right so this is h2f okay this is tuned to some frequency f2 this is tuned to some frequency f1 okay and if somehow i can produce an output so i have two different filters i feed the same input to this filter as well as this filter okay and i choose my center frequency somewhere here the carrier frequency somewhere here if i can now produce an output which is proportional to the output amplitudes of these two amplitude differences of these two outputs right that is produce an output which is proportional to the diff of the outputs of these two filters what will i get i'll get a net result which will subtract out these two right responses and you are likely to get a frequency response which is like this <coughs> right with zero response at fc and the linear response which is which has a much larger range the linearity extends over a much larger range there will be an s shaped curve here when you take the difference these two and that will serve as a nice 
ideal a uh, close to ideal discriminator right using two stagger tuned bandpass filters the center frequencies of each of which are uh, chosen to be away from the desired carrier frequency you can realize a differentiator which is close to being a fairly good one as a practical approximation okay. so this is a principle we'll discuss this idea a little further and uh, the corresponding circuit and all that and then discuss the entire thing mathematically. Thank you very much.